Thank you for coming to Reporting in Drupal Commerce. Um, I am Matt Glaman. Hold on, it's not. So my name is Matt Glaman. I am a senior Drupal consultant at Commerce Guys. And it reset the thing in there so I can't even look at my computer. Um, I am a Drupal Commerce co-maintainer of the 2.x branch. Um, and I guess 1.x technically. Um, I'm the author of the Drupal 8 Development Cookbook, which had the second edition released in Vienna time. Um, I'm also the author of ContribConbound.com, which takes Drupal.org issue queues and turns it into Kanban boards so you can actually grok what issues you're working on. And the um, creator of the PHP Storm plugin that lets you run the run test script inside PHP Storm. Because everybody should be running tests and helping run tests when they contribute to Drupal Core. So, this, this presentation is on reporting in Drupal Commerce and why, like, we know about reporting and data, but why is reporting important? Um, well, the main thing is, like, merchants want to know what they're, I hate this stuff. Merchants want to know what, what products are selling, right? The whole point of selling online is to sell things and make money. You want to know what's actually selling so you can deprecate old products or bring in new ones. Um, merchants want to know who they're selling to, right? Who's buying your products? What are the demographics? What, if you're bringing a new product online, will it match with who you're selling to? Merchants also want to know what marketing campaigns are performing. People don't just like buy stuff because they stumbled upon it. We live in capitalism. You make people want things they didn't know they needed. So you market that. And you need to make sure your marketing campaigns are going, otherwise you waste money and you don't survive and your business goes out of business. So that's why reporting is pretty important. It's also important because they need to make data-driven business decisions, right? We have these products. What if one's not selling? We need to take that product out of the line, bring in a new product. What if that new product isn't selling like we think? Um, what if we're just targeting the wrong demographics? What if our market's wrong? What if we're doing an ad campaign and it's performing wrong? You don't know these things unless you have some kind of reporting in place to make these decisions so that way your business excels at selling <laughs> online. With this, that comes into the whole like insights and intelligence. Um, merchants need raw data that tells them how their site is performing. You know, just what is my base revenue, what are my page views, things like that. Um, this helps them draw insights to make business decisions. And there's reporting tools that give you that raw data and then turn that into insights and help you make decisions based off of it, right? Because you can see like my blog had this many page views, but do you know if that blog view caused somebody to go to a product that caused a conversion rate? Or that you had traffic coming from Facebook, but did they buy a product? Um, this raw data doesn't give you that, and there's tools that help you collect that raw data to turn it into something insightful. <coughs> so you can make more money, because that's the end goal when selling online. So I'm gonna talk about reporting specifically in Drupal Commerce. That's kind of the prelude to like why it's important. And now that Drupal Commerce 2 has been, you know, we just, we're gonna release 2.5 either today or tomorrow. Um, the ecosystem has really matured. So now we get to focus on things that help you, what, deliver stronger e-commerce systems to your clients, or if you are a store owner, have a better system itself. We have three options available, um, Commerce Reports, it's my little baby. That was my introduction to the Drupal community. Um, there's Google Analytics, and then there's a new option that Commerce Guys is presenting called Lean Commerce Reports. I'm gonna step through each of these, the good, the bad, and the why. There is no ugly here. Um, so Commerce Reports. Um, so Commerce Reports is a native reporting tool built in Drupal and Drupal Commerce. It kind of follows that Drupal way, where you like, install a module and it just does the things with your own data, and it's right there. Um, it uses raw values and queries from the database. Give you tables and charts. Um, it's currently in alpha status. It's near beta. Um, I sprinted on it in February when I was at Florida Drupal Camp to get it into an alpha-ish status. Um, I need to spend some time on the beta. As you do like basic report entries, it has no user interface right now um, because there's just big problems to handle with data. Um, so I'm the maintainer. And I also have a shout out in here to Chris Rockwell who's not here, I, don't, I think he's on the west coast. Um, I had an architecture plan, he wanted to tackle this for a client and I spit out randomness in Drupal Slack and he turned that into patches that unblocked the project. So I, you know, contribution is always great like that. Um, and that's why we now have an 8.x branch. 
So, what's the plus side of commerce reports? It's free, it's on-site reporting that uses your existing database. There's no extra cost, technically. Um, you don't need to pay for a third-party service, you don't need to pay for a module, you don't need to pay for whatever else, but you kind of pay it in the unknowns. Um, so it's going to impact your database storage, which means that we're adding more records to your database that should be used for your products and your orders. Um, so you might have to buy more database storage because you're a data warehouse now. And it also affects your, it impacts your performance. You've got that store manager that's like, I want to see my revenue reports every hour and it's refreshing that page. And that same database that's reading orders is supposed to be serving your clients to take their money. Well, a slow database means slower checkout, which means higher abandonment of checkout. So, you know, there's some trade-offs there that can be mitigated and worked around, but that is one of the gotchas um, that could you need if they're doing that, you might need a bigger database server. Um, the big improvement with Commerce Reports, and this is an 8.x specifically, this is kind of like a learned lesson after I became maintainer of the 4.x branch, is it stores information in a denormalized fashion. So people that don't, that don't know about like normalized and denormalized data, Drupal's all about data model, and normalized data means like each thing has its own table and relationships. That's why we have multi-value fields so easily. That's great until you have to query this, like send it to an ERP in a backend, or an ERP needs to actually scrape your database, or you need to do reports, or if somebody's trying to work with views in this, you need to make like five different relationships and then tell them how to configure it. It is not easy. So the new architecture is it takes an order once it's been placed and puts it into a more understandable format, which makes it easier for reporting, also sending off to another backend system that might do things with that data. Um, you can query reports using familiar APIs. So reports are saved as a content entity. So if you're a developer and you need to write a custom report, you can use something familiar that you would use to like load notes to load something else. Um, you just use the aggregate query that the core entity API provides. Um, it also provides concrete financial reporting. So uh, a lot of people use commerce reports for tax reporting at the end of the year. They query their orders, they figure out how much tax remittances there is, and then they use that for their financial reporting. And it's great because it's off your raw data. You can query your raw data, generate a report, have something there. Um, so that's one good part about it. And then there's a quick view of the, the UI at the moment. It's just tables. You know, there's no fancy dashboard. It's just like order totals. It's not like product-based ones yet. Um, it has a pluggable architecture, so those things will be coming down the pipe. Um, some negatives. So like I said, use the same database as your store. I mean, I guess you could configure it not to, to have its own database that it writes those entities to. That's above my knowledge that I looked into. Creating a report requires a developer and code which was kind of the actual truth back in Drupal 7, but people had views. And you could do it without code and views, but you still needed to be a developer to write reports. So Drupal 8, I don't plan on out of the box supporting views. It will work, but really you should be writing code for a lot of these things. Um, user interfaces are hard. So instead of focusing on user interface, it's just like provide the data model and figure out how to represent it. Especially if we come up with a better decoupled system, like if React, if a React admin comes in the core, we can like build a really cool dashboard using JavaScript instead of Drupal's, Drupal's render system. You can deliver better value that way. Um, and you need to be a views wizard. Half of my support requests like, how do I put this relationship and make an aggregate query? Which, last time I used views, which was like 8.2, um, I have avoided views in Drupal, and that's because aggregate queries didn't work, and the query API was fine. So this is just where it's like kind of a gap in my knowledge, but I will do my best to support that with commerce reports. And one of the big issues, and this was highlighted about who you're selling to and what they're doing, it's server-side only. So you don't know anything about the customer except for what they tell you on checkout. So if they come and they added a product to the cart, you don't know who they are until they enter checkout and, t and they, they say, I want to tell you more about me. So if they don't get there, you know you have abandoned carts, but you don't know where it came from, why, anything about their story that brought them to the site and may have caused them to leave. You can't make business decisions off that. You can see what products they're selling, but you don't know why they are. You just know the fact that they exist and they are being sold at this value. So next we'll transition to Google Analytics, which kind of touches on that server side, or you know, the mitigation of the server side issue. Who here uses Google Analytics on their website currently? 
Yeah, just about everybody because they power like 90% of the web analytics out there. And they have an e-commerce plugin. Makes sense. Um, so Commerce Google Analytics adds the e-commerce reporting to the Google Analytics module. Basically, when events happen, it bubbles up information into the page and has JavaScript send it out. It's as simple as that. So you have the Google Analytics module installed. It just sends extra data that should be out there. Um, since, event, since, yeah, since events is the client, you have a basic dashboard in here. Um, give me some revenue reporting various things. Um, the current status, it's in dev status. Like somebody got maintainer access to the basic port and it sends raw, very minimal data. Um, it's transaction only, doesn't give you information about card or checkouts. It's, all those things are supported, it's just not there yet. There's no plan. Um, last I checked, we were seeking to gain like maintenance of it so we can start flushing it out. Because even though it may not be like in our like core pocket of things that we want to be flushed out, but we don't want somebody to need this and then turn away from the platform because it doesn't exist. So we are going to try to at least get it to a workable version. It may not be like a full feature implementation, but you should be able to install it and get those basics there. Because um, we want you to use Drupal Commerce and succeed. You know, that's our job as maintainers, whether it's not whether it's in contrib or core. So the plus size, again, free-ish. Um, Google Analytics is free. That's probably why most of you have it on your site. Is right, you go to Google Analytics, you sign up, and boom, they give you a tracking code, plug it in. You start seeing who's on your site in real-time data, which is really cool. Except you're giving all your data to Google, which I you know they have privacy policies and all that, but know why they want to have their stuff everywhere on the web is then they can track global behavior. Some people like that. Some people, you know, that's part of the contract. I have an Android phone. I give all my stuff to Google because they give me cool free stuff. But that's one thing a lot of people want to consider. Um, you also might have to pay for Enterprise, which is the Google Analytics 360 suite, and I'll cover on why you may need to pay for that in a little bit. Um, another good part is it allows client-side tracking behavior. You can know how they got to your site, what they clicked on, you know their user story and their journey to cart abandonment, to just browsing the site, to converting. Um, that lets you build a better buying experience because that's how you find out your drop-off is at the, the review page. Like, hi. Like, people go through the problem of giving you their billing information, their shipping information, they get to the review page, and then they drop. I was like, well, why? Oh, well, maybe because we don't have Ajax showing the shipping method, the, like the shipping payment information. They only find that when they get to the review process. Now, Commerce doesn't do that out of the box, but that's, you know, like, that's an example. All of a sudden, they get to the review process, they see taxes or shipping like finally calculated, and they're sticker shocked, so they cancel. That's where client-side information is key, because you know where people stop in the process of giving you money. Um, you can configure your checkout steps, so you can give it like different labels, and when it's integrated, it pushes the event, so it's like, I'm on this checkout page, here's the label, so it gives you that, that content flow, just like if you're browsing how they get to different content on your site. Um, like I said, it's not implemented yet, so that's why these charts are really sad and boring, um, but hopefully in a little bit we'll get this fixed and I can update the slides. But yeah, this is just give you know cart behavior. You need to figure out why people aren't giving you money. That's the whole point of selling online is to receive money. Um, it can let you do social and marketing campaign conversion tracking. So if you hook in your UTM parameters, which is like urgent tracking mode marketing, I don't know what it stands for. But it, it lets you know different metadata about how they might have got to the site. You know, if you have run an ad campaign, it might say CP, CPC, Google. Blah, or they might come from Bing, pay-per-click, whatever the terms might properly be. And this lets you know, where, like I said, where people are dropping off where they're coming from. Now, to the negatives. So like I said, you're giving your data to Google. Google doesn't let you get the raw data. Once you send it there, it's in a vault. It's locked off. All you can do is view it via their dashboard and maybe their API. Like, you might be able to consume via their API and do things with it to their rules. Unless you pay for the Google Analytics 360 suite, which I heard you pay out the nose for and is more expensive than Enterprise Salesforce. Because when you have the Google Analytics 360, you can actually get the raw data and do cool things with it. But none, I don't think anybody here, including myself, has a client that would be willing to pay for something like that. <coughs> and if they do, 
well, they, they have in-source teams that work with Google Analytics pretty well. Um, here's the downside with client-side tracking. A lot of people don't like Google Analytics. Some people don't like JavaScript. You know, when you have people that are very privacy-oriented, you know, marketers want to know information about you. Some people don't like the scope creep on that, so they block tracking. That means you don't know anything about those people. There's no analytics, which means your revenue's wrong, right? So if I have no script enabled, or I have Chrome, Google's, like, Google's analytic blocker for Chrome, all of a sudden my order data isn't being sent to Google Analytics. Well, what, now you've got an incomplete sales dashboard, and what good does that do you? Um, besides knowing that maybe you have a reconciliation process, and you know that half of your customers don't like being tracked in Google Analytics. Um, so it provides no guarantee of conversions, and Google Analytics itself has no SLA, service level agreement, on events being entered into Google Analytics itself. Um, may, I think there might be like a server-side way to push data into Google Analytics, and that could be a way to mitigate it, but in the most common way that it works, that doesn't exist, so you can get little black holes in your data, which is no fun. Um, and I tried to do this myself, and I have no idea how to write custom reports in Google Analytics. So you still need that expertise challenge, where commerce reports, right? Someone needs to know the code, need to know views, to do something. Google Analytics, you need the same thing. I try to make some custom reports, but I have no idea how to plug it together. And I know there's people that make lots of money consulting for Google Analytics, because you can do really cool things. I was on a project for a ski company. They took the sales data in Google Analytics, weather, and found out that actually, when it gets ski season, the highest selling places were the southeast, southwest, where it was hot. Not when it got cold, it's because everybody where it's hot needed to buy supplies to go skiing in Colorado. That's where the insights and intelligence comes into play, and that's how Google Analytics helped them, but they also had to pay a consultant to build that crazy graph. So there's always a catch when you get into them. You're gonna have to do some kind of legwork, possibly. Um, and then this doesn't really affect us here in the States, but a lot of our users are in Europe, and they came up with GDPR, which I've done some reading up on, and I try to understand. Basically, it says you can call a company, but like, my name's Mac Laman. Can you query me? And if they say yes, they have to purge your data, or you can request them to, um, which is fun. And this is a problem that transcends Drupal Commerce itself, not just Google Analytics. We have people working on this. When I say people, I mean the community. Luckily, it has made a Drupal 7 fix, and there's a Drupal 8 one in the works. So Google Analytics requires spe specific language in your privacy policy. Who has done that? Who has, update, who has put a privacy policy on their site, said that they're using Google Analytics, and copied the boilerplate text? One, I have it on my site. I don't do it. I'm a bad person. I, I should update it in good faith to the people that visit my blog so that they are aware of it. But they're right there. One person out of the room. You know, that's, we could say it's like a 5% of the sample space here. I told clients they should. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing, and that's where it comes into the gray area with Google Analytics and just the modern age of data privacy, right? This is a new, this is becoming, we're becoming more conscious of this. Um, so with the GDPR, data privacy requirements are changing. I doubt it will happen here in the States because marketers are first class citizen and regular citizens aren't because data makes money. Um, and you are a little bit different. But Google Analytics has made, they say that they're going to respect this, I don't know how it's going to work. Because right, if you can't delete data in Google Analytics, does that mean the customer is going to call you and then you have to go to Google Analytics, see if the data is there, then tell Google to delete it? Or like what? This is an unknown, right? This is like, it's kind of like the new text, but like we don't know what's going to happen until the first big explosion happens, then we'll know how to fix it. So that's just one thing to keep in mind and another gotcha with the whole like data privacy consciousness, as I'm calling it. So, those are the two contributed module solutions, and I've tried to do my best to make sure to show the pros and cons, both out of the box can deliver a solution for you that need customizations, and I know because I sit on the support team, I try to do my best to help people succeed. And we identified this as kind of like a bottleneck. When I say we, I mean the maintainers, Ryan, Boyan, and I. That reporting is one of those key things that people need to have a successful Drupal Commerce installation and delivery to a client. So there's a product to be rolled out called Lean Commerce Reports, and that's the next step I'm going to talk about. So we found this gap where you always pay somebody to customize something, customize commerce reports, customize Google Analytics, 
This is great if you have somebody that has a budget. Because we know people that have used commerce reports to build like a hotel tracking system and like revenue per hotel, all this kind of stuff. Or like I said, Google Analytics with temperatures and regions. But what if you have a client that needs reports and they're going to pick Shopify instead and pay more a month for Shopify than maybe a solution that gives them reports? We have this happen. Shopify is cheap. I don't blame it until you start doing high volume and they hold you, hold, like hold a knife to your back because they pay us more money or lose your store. So I'm going to talk about Lean Commerce Reports, which is a new product that we're releasing. Right now it's in private beta. That's a sample dashboard. And what it intends to do is be a plug and play sales dashboard. So you sign up, you plug in an API key, say, here you go, bam. And you know, it's built by the maintainers of Drupal Commerce, so it's going to tackle a lot of those edge cases, so that way it's, you don't have, we don't want you to have to think about hard problems in e-commerce, specifically Drupal Commerce. That's supposed to be our job. So this is one way we are trying to tackle this problem space, besides just giving you a module to install that you might have to configure. So one of the benefits is client-side and server-side. We identified that problem, right? Otherwise, you'd have to have commerce reports and Google Analytics and reconcile them on your own. We try to do that for you. All events are sent on the back end and enriched with front end analytics, like page tracking, so you can see the number of conversions. How many unique sessions visited my site? How many unique sessions converted? Um, you know, so that way you don't have to do that math. Some other things people like, you know, revenue per day, per seven days, three months. Um, out of the box reporting with no configuration or code. Um, so here, what are the examples I have on here? Let me stay within the mic. So top products, your conversion funnel. You know, like I said, the drop off effect. That it, I think we have that as both back end and front end. We're sending the events, um, and then traffic by channel. An example here, I make about traffic by channel, and I forgot to mention it with Google Analytics because that's a key one that helps with this. The Pinterest versus Facebook paradigm. Pinterest is shown to be an excellent e-commerce channel. People buy stuff from Pinterest. Facebook, people use for advertising. Well, are you spending 300 bucks a month on Facebook to advertise products and getting no conversions? You're losing money. But Pinterest, you're just like, hey, I got somebody that pins something and you're making money off of it. You're losing money on Facebook by paying more for the wrong marketing campaign. You can decide Facebook should be brand awareness Pinterest, I could advertise on, increase my conversions, and Pinterest could be how you make money with advertising. Facebook could be brand awareness, and it's cheaper to do brand awareness marketing on Facebook. So that's where the whole client side analytics is big, and that's where we try to help you out of the box. Um, out of the box reporting, again, you know, the table, you can filter it, stuff you come to expect. Um, Card checkout funnel analysis. Eventually this will be split up where you can see what specific step of checkout is dumped out. Right now it's kind of bundled, especially since Drupal Commerce 2 out of the box has two pages only. Drupal Commerce 7 does have like a billion. It has like four, but most people have condensed it to two. So we just avoided the, like I said, it's private beta, so we don't have like that config yet, but that is something we'll add. The traffic tunnel ref reporting, you know, the effective, effectiveness of advertising campaigns. You know, what if you decide to give Twitter a try and advertise on Twitter, and what if it works? You know, this way it lets you know where they came from. Um, revenue reports by store. So this is really cool too. We, this is our, our private beta customer, has 72 franchises, and Drupal Commerce 2 has store support, like, mul like marketplaces and different stores. But in this example, I went for, you know, I have a United States store, I have a Canada, UK, and Mexico, right? And I want to see their revenue there. And you can actually filter our reports by your store. So you can see an overall view of your company. We could drill down to a specific store. Like how is the US performing? How is Canada performing? The different revenue. Now, here in the States, you wouldn't have a store per state really. I think you might, but it may not happen. This edge case is great, like in the European market, to show like how is France, how is UK, how is Germany, how is it, the markets are more um, identifiable there. But that is one thing, you know, as the maintainers of Drupal Commerce, we make this aware. Um, Drupal Commerce 7, it would be one store. We're trying to figure out how you could possibly say my three Drupal Commerce 7 installs or Drupal Commerce 1 installs should be in the same account. So you could see like a filter store view there. Um, but we just haven't had anybody request.
request that quite yet. And stepping back to that request that quite yet, since it is a software as a service platform, you get iterate, you pay that flat monthly fee. I think we're doing like an intro of like 10 bucks a month and get those improvements over time versus writing that code yourself. Um, ah, evolving platform. <laughs> I am on here. So the first one shows tax reporting. Um, I changed the names from the actual data, but they, like the other client has different tax reports. So this, this isn't like commerce reports where you can go back and query the raw data because what if there's a return? What if there's like an adjustment? This is like a snapshot of data, but you could, you know, at a quarter analysis when you just have to do your ballpark pay-in, look at this, say, all right, I paid this much money. Okay, write that check to the government. We'll do the full reconciliation at the end of the year. So for us, those of us who do have to do quarterly tax payments or however, it would be nice to just quickly know, yeah, we gotta write this check. End of the year, we pay more or we get on a slight refund. Um, and then promotion, promotions, you know, tracking coupon codes. This is something that could be that could be provided by um, promote by Core Drupal Commerce itself with usage counts or commerce reports. But by having this data, we can help do insights. We can help merge it in and help you see the bigger picture. Does that also support the regional like municipality state level? So that table is populated by the tax rate reported. Whatever you have set up. Whatever you have set up. So like in our case, they have food tax, no food tax, something yeah, else. Yeah. Use tax, whatever. Yeah, so it would show up as different records. Okay. And this is one, we're collecting this data right now, but we don't have it exposed in like the UI. Right. So we're, we are trying to be proactive. Like we have, we know all these things we need to collect, but they're not necessarily exposed in the UI yet. Okay. Um, this is it. So it's a plug and play dashboard for Drupal Commerce sites, and it is pitched as a software as a service. So that way, you don't have to turn a client away from Drupal Commerce because they're missing a feature. You know, there's plenty of clients that have like $40,000 to throw at a reporting solution. There are some people that want that. They want it to be bespoke. And then there's clients that do, they just want it to work. Or there's an agency that just wants to offer it and then see if the client later wants to do a more robust reporting solution. And as commerce guys, as the maintainer of Drupal Commerce, we want you to succeed as agencies. And this is a new product that we want to offer alongside Drupal Commerce that helps you do that. Well, I think like the starter one's like 10 bucks a month and then there will be like incremental value or like incremental changes to get more of that insights and data. Um, but it helps with the offloaded storage. Now it's not stored in your database, which is a good thing. We actually had a um, data loss issue and I was able to go into our bucket of data download it, hand it to the client, and they're able to reconstruct the last 24 hours of data that they had lost. So like, we might even be toy toying around with, is it also a data recovery solution? Because you're offloading your data, your, your information somewhere, so if you do have that blip of six hours, and like, shoot, we have to, ref we have to fulfill these orders, all that. Um, so that's, that's it. Oh, and you don't have to log into a different site either. When you install our module that sends data, we actually add a dashboard that has an iframe. So, and it has its own permission. So you can give the store manager, you know, like your client or your store manager's access. They can view it and they get the dashboard rendered inside Drupal via an iframe, no extra login somewhere. Um, the login elsewhere will help you like manage billing later and all that. But this way no one has to leave your site. Your store own if you have multiple stores, you can then see a drop down that lets you change the store. We have it set up where, like in the franchisee example, Let's say one person owns three stores. They get a drop down that shows their three stores. If you're an admin, you see all the stores. Or if they own one store, they don't see the drop down at all, they just see their dashboard. And there's a way to like aggregate your three stores into one view or individual. So we want to solve, at Commerce Guys, we try to solve the hardest problems of selling online. And this is one of our ways to try to do that for you. So I only got a minute, this is 30 minutes, um, for questions. So. We're gonna do a minute, of, actually it's lunch, so I guess we could sit and ask a few questions, but if you're hungry, don't, I think just wait. I, I will be here today and tomorrow for the sprints. So if you do have general Drupal Commerce session, Drupal Commerce questions, I'll be at the sprints tomorrow from 10, running sprints, mentoring, answering questions, or just hunt me down today, and I love to talk about this stuff. So, questions. Wow. <laughs> We're stunned by awesomeness. Yeah. So, 
I, I went through that as fast as I could because I didn't want to like go over. And 